This video begins our discussion of the java.io package and streaming I.O. Uh, in particular, we're also going to be looking at binary I.O. So, turns out there are newer I.O. packages in Java than the original I.O. package. There is what's called the N.I.O. package, which stands for the new I.O. Uh, I don't cover that in large part because of the complexity. Um, if you're actually going to do high performance I.O., you'll want to use that because it has non-blocking calls. You can set up um, asynchronous calls for doing your I.O., which is actually a much better way to do input and output. But we're going to use Java.io in part because of the simplicity, in part because of the integration with the next thing that we're going to talk about, which is networking. So Java.io. There are basically four types that serve as kind of the root of a large inheritance hierarchy that covers most of the types that are in this package. They are input stream, output stream, right there, reader, and writer. And so I want to look, we're mainly going to focus on input stream and output stream. So I want to look at the, the methods of these. You'll note this was part of the original 1.0 release of Java. The input stream itself is abstract. So that means that you have to, there's the, you have to wind up, uh, ex, you have to extend it. You cannot instantiate an input stream. You instantiate some subtype of input stream, and there are quite a few different subtypes, and we'll look at a number of different subtypes. The, there are a number of significant methods on this. There is the ability to read a single, and note it's a byte, even though it returns an int. You can also read an array of bytes, and you can read into an array of bytes given an offset and a length. You can potentially reset to a mark location, but not all streams will support that. We're actually not going to deal with that. You need to be able to close streams. As we talked about before, you open a file, you need to close it. You can skip a certain number of bytes in a stream, and you can ask how many bytes are available to, to be read. And that's pretty much it. And you'll notice that this one method here, read, is abstract. So the input stream itself isn't set up to read from anything. You need to have concrete implementations of it that actually read from something. Uh, there will also be concrete implementations that don't necessarily read from anything. They wrap around things that do. The output stream has kind of a, you know, a shorter but similar set of methods. We have the ability to close it. We have the ability to flush it, which says definitely write all of this stuff out to where it's supposed to go. The ability to write a single byte. Once again, it's passed in as an int, but it's only going to write out the lowest byte of that int. And then to write out full arrays of bytes, either the full array or some fraction of the array. So you note the input stream and output stream deal with bytes. And at a fundamental level, all the data on the computer is stored in bytes. So technically you can read and write whatever you want just with these streams. If you were dealing with text data, it turns out that the reader and writer have very similar sets of methods, except for the fact that instead of being bytes, they give you arrays of cares. So the read doesn't read a byte, it reads a single character. And then there are the reading arrays that read arrays of characters. Because the Scala library has a source, the source is perfectly good for us to read text data. So we're not that much interested in using a reader to read it nor are we all that interested in a writer for writing out text data, because that's what it has the ability to do, write out characters. We're going to focus primarily on input stream, output stream, and the subtypes of those. There is one other class in here that is definitely worth knowing about, and that is the file class. It has, uh, it represents a file, and it has a bunch of methods that allow you to do things like find the all of the files that are sub in a given subdirectory you can ask if a file is hidden if it is a directory etc uh, you can also kind of change some of the permissions on these things so if you're wanting to do something with a file the file class java.io.file is probably where you're going to go to do that and for some of our input streams that will wind up being helpful 
we'll look at the various other types of input streams and output streams basically as they're needed as we go through this playlist. Now, we can't instantiate an input stream because it's abstract, so we need some form of, of concrete implementation that we can instantiate, and we're going to start off by looking at the file input stream and the file output stream, and these wind up basically being input streams and output streams that connect to files. So a file input stream, you pass it one of these file objects, or you pass it a string for the name of, of the file that you want to read. And I'd like to real quickly write just a little bit of code that uses one of those. We will make a new package called iostream. And then inside of this package, we can make an app, uh, read bytes. And what I want to do is I'm just going to create another one of the, uh, a file input stream. So FIS is a new file input stream. And I want to, and I could have it so we took command line arguments, but I'm running this here inside of Eclipse. So I'm actually going to have this program read itself. So all of my source files are in the SRC directory inside of the package, and then readbytes.scala is the name of the file. So that should create a file input stream. We need to import it. We just opened a file, so to make sure I don't forget to do it, I'm going to close it immediately. And then what I want to do is I'm going to declare a var. I'm going to call it byte, and it will be the result of calling read. Now the interesting thing to note about byte is while well, I called it byte, technically once again it is an int. And if we go look at the API, it will give us some hint. Let's go back to input stream and actually look at the read method. The read method returns an, an int, and here's the thing, it returns negative one if there's no more data. Well, we couldn't do that nicely with a uh, with the the byte. So, you know, it's, it basically gives us something in the range of 0 to 255 if it's valid, if it's a valid byte. Otherwise, it gives us negative 1 if we got to the end. So that's the main reason why read returns a whole int instead. And I just want to keep reading as long as that's not negative 1. So while byte is greater than equal to 0, that means we still have stuff to read, I am going to print out Notice I'm not print lining, because then I'd get a whole bunch of lines from this. I'm going to print out byte plus a space, so that I get spaces between all of these things, and then I need to read another one. Okay. When we're done with all of this, I haven't printed a line yet, so I will actually print a line, and let's try running that. So there we go. Here's our output. And this, these are the ASCII values for everything that is inside of that file. 32 happens to be a space, uh, just looking at the file, so 112 should be P, 97 should be A, I happen to actually know that one's A, and then C is 99, etc. So these are the ASCII values for all of the characters that are in this file here. So simple example usage of a file input stream. Uh, we're able to read in the individual bytes. If you did want, for some reason, to do text input with the file input stream, well, it turns out that the scala.io.source object, we normally call from file on this. Uh, and you can call from file and pass it the name of the file. That's what we've normally done. But you can also call from file and pass it a file object there is also a from input stream. So if for some reason you have an input stream, but you want to have access to Scala collections, remember the advantage of the source is the fact that a source is part of the Scala collection library. So it has map and filter. Input streams don't have map and filter. You saw all the methods that they have on them. They're actually quite simple. We get to read bytes on them. But if we wanted to, to have the more sophisticated Scala methods, we can wrap it inside of a source. We're not going to do that because the source is really good for text input and we want to be doing binary data here. So that gives you a basic introduction. 
We're going to see some of the other things that we can do and also talk about what to do when things go wrong, kind of revisit exceptions in this, uh, in this playlist.